Welcome to Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS channel partner, we sell and support products from ANSYS Inc. in the Four Corner States and Nevada. In addition, we provide consulting and training in ANSYS tools worldwide. These tools provide simulation capabilities in fluid dynamics, structural mechanics, electromagnetics, as well as systems and multiphysics applications. Hey guys, this is Minoj with PADT. In today's focus video blog, I'm going to show you the automatic cross-section generation using Design Modeler. Let's say you're doing an analysis on some line bodies, for example. As you can see, in my case, I have three line bodies. Now, usually, the first thing I'd have to do is create some cross-sections by going to Concept, Cross-Section, and either using one of the standard shapes in Design Modeler, or maybe using my own sketches in User Defined. Now that's great and all, but what if I have to do this for multiple projects, multiple geometries, in which the cross-sections are all pretty similar if not exact? One way to automate this and make it more easier is to actually write a script. Now don't worry, it's not as difficult as it may sound. I'm going to show you a script here that creates some cross-section examples for us. So as you can see, there's, some, there's five callouts for cross-section here. This VAR CS1 is just giving it a variable name with an internal ANSYS. The AGB.CSRECT is the actual function callout for what type of cross-section you're doing. So in this case, you can see this is creating a rectangular cross-section. The CSCIRC is creating a circular cross-section. And then CSI section is creating a I section cross-section. Now, depending on what function, you need to define some dimensions. Now they are all predefined dimensions in terms of one is width, one is height, and vice versa, as well as some of the more complicated geometries. So here we create five cross sections. So what we can do is once we've written this in Notepad, and don't forget to add this agb.regn, this just basically refreshes the design modeler, so there's no quirks using the cross sections for the analysis. Once you've created your script, go to File, Save As, give it a name make sure you save it as all files and then give it a .js suffix. In my case I've already created it but I'll go ahead and replace it just for the sake of showing. So now you, when you go back to design modeler you can go to file, run script and then go ahead and double click on your script. And you can see it created five cross sections for us. So if you look at this first one as a RECT1, it created a rectangular cross section that was six units by four and a half units. Now since my design model project units were in meters, hence they defined the rectangular cross section as being six meters by four and a half meters. So keep in mind what project units you're using. So as you can see, it's really easy. You can create a whole variety of cross sections automatically and be able to go ahead and choose which cross section apply to which line body, for example, here. All pretty useful. A couple things to keep in mind is that it doesn't work, like I said, with your own user-defined cross sections, although user-integrated cross sections where you're defined uh, the moment of inertia and all those things, you can automate those as well. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details on all the dimensions of every single cross-section that you would need to define on the script, but what I'll do is I'll show you the ANSYS help menu that's great for this, for this type of work. I'll go ahead and copy this link down at the bottom of the video so you can have access to it. You can simply copy the link and, cop and paste it into your ANSYS help menu. So as you can see here, here are all the functions that are associated with the script of automatically creating cross-sections. So a hat section, for example, or a Z section. And they give you some dimension terms, W1, W2, W3, etc. So what you can do is you can go and click on whatever section you're interested in. And it'll give you a sort of a diagram where you can specify, oh, that's what dimension I'm interested in. I need to give it four units. I need to give it six units, etc. We hope this video was useful. And please subscribe to PADT as we will be doing more videos on tips and examples in ANSYS. If you have any questions, feel free to call PADT Inc. Otherwise, see you next time.